Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and this has been around for a little while, and Tim McCandless, one of my friends, suggested I try it in the video, so here we are. So, what would you use this for? Well, down here we have bare foundation. It doesn't have any beeswax on it at all. And I wanted to try this out and see if, I'm going to call them a crayon, this beeswax crayon can be rubbed onto this foundation and if it will work properly and, and the bees draw because there's a lot of uses for it and there are beekeepers that say this works good for them so let me know your experience if you've already tried this out so what I have right here is some foundation that the bees just partially drew and there's a couple reasons this can happen first sometimes the bees go through a queenless period and when there's not a queen and she's not pumping out the brood and there's an imbalance in the colony they do weird stuff. So sometimes they'll even a lot weirder than this. And also sometimes you get foundation that maybe it's been sitting in a warehouse for a while or you've let it sit for a while. The beeswax has gotten old and brittle and the bees will chip it off. There's a lot of different ways that you can end up with foundation like this. And once it gets bare, those bees are not gonna draw that out. Listen to the difference between this bare spot and this with beeswax on it big difference and so what I'm hoping we can do is just rub this on and this would be handy to have these around whenever you encounter something like this and you can rub that on now as you can probably see most of that's going down into the to the cells and I'm not sure how much is getting on the outside it does feel like there is some though yeah that's a lot better I have an idea though and a theory but before we get into that um, let me show you this right here so Laurel set this up for me um, did a great job these are paper towel rolls um, you can use a toilet paper roll or whatever else hey waste not want not all that kind of stuff right but these are just hot glued down and on the inside there's some parchment and we are going to rip this open very carefully. And basically you get the idea. You could actually leave this on probably and just have something to hold, but I think it's better just to go ahead and rip this off. If Laurel did it smarter, she got like a razor knife and just went down and peeled it right off like a cast. Anyways, it's real basic. Basically hot glue it down. You put the parchment in there so it doesn't seep in or through the the paper material and then you just pour it in and let it cool so that's pretty basic i made a few of them up obviously you have to have some beeswax and be careful where you buy it from some of the stuff online that you order especially the stuff if you're not sure it comes from china or not can be beeswax mixed with paraffin and it's pretty common for, uh, to get some of that from some foreign places so try to source some U.S. beeswax if you can. Now, let's get back to this right here. So we have these two sheets. They absolutely have no beeswax on them at all. Very loud. Now this is some foundation that has beeswax on it. Very different sound. And I want to show you the difference between doing this cold and doing this hot. My opinion, just right out of the gate, is it works a lot better warmed up. So let's do it cold, and we'll do the same side, that way we get semi-uniform results. So this is cold. And the bees can move this around to a degree, so it's not like it's all waste going down into the cell. However, I would prefer more of it to get onto the thin cell walls, which is where it needs to end up. So it smells amazing. You can definitely feel that. So listen to this. Let me put it on the table. Uh, yeah, well, okay, hand stays here. So we have a little bit of a difference there. I can feel a little bit of tackiness with my nails. Hmm. I can feel more tackiness sticking my nails into this foundation from the Premier. So let's try this heated up now. Get this off of here. 
And if you have a, a hair dryer or your wife's hair dryer, just um, it was not my suggestion that you use it, by the way. Maybe uh, we could start a counseling service for uh, beekeepers <laughs> and, and spouses. All right, so we're just going to warm this up. Now, I don't think you have to have a dryer or a heat gun to do this. But as you can see, that's starting to get nice and soft looking. And I think that's going to make a big difference. So I'm just going to put a light amount of pressure. And it's not going much down into it. I can see more on the cell wall. Now, when you have this going on in the summertime, all I think you need to do is just leave it outside. If it's 90 degrees, 100 degrees, it's totally different. Around 100 degrees, in my opinion, is perfect. The wax is a lot softer to the touch. Right now, it's like 70 in our house. And so it's a lot harder than it would be outside in the sun around 95 to 105 degrees. And so you can also store it. Wow, okay, I can definitely feel more of a difference there than I can here. Does that mean that it won't work on this? I don't know for, for certain, but I would recommend that you warm it up, um, even if it's just 90 degrees, whatever. I think it makes a huge difference just on this little bit that I'm trying it out. Now this is a little getting back to it being a little bit colder. And you can see, again, it's flaking it more off down into there. I want to put these in a hive and see how way, well they draw this. Uh, but this isn't something that, like, if you're doing a bunch of this stuff, it doesn't make any sense. What I would recommend is you, you get this tool right here and get a crock pot, and you, you just roll it on. It's so much faster. Almost all of it goes onto those cell edges. You know, but... If you have your, plenty of your own beeswax, and so you're not having to pay pay a bunch for it, you could just do it like that and just, you know, real quickly go through it. That's quite a bit of beeswax there. And... Yeah, I think that might work. I don't know. We're going to have to try this out. Maybe we just need to get a bunch of this stuff with no wax on it and do it cold and do it hot and see how it works out. Personally though, when it's gummier and warmer, it seems to do a lot better. I think having one of these around could be really handy. You can make them yourself super easy. There's also some candle molds that you can get. Um, I'll leave a link down below if you don't want to have to go through the hassle of making these, but they're really not too hard. And I think just keep this Set it outside on a warm day, let it get a little bit of sun, or use that wife's uh, hair dryer, or maybe your hair dryer. Maybe you, you like to have a really fancy do. So, you know, then you don't have to ask permission. Oh, yeah, that's just way easier and better, in my opinion. It's, it needs to be warm, I think. It just makes sense. But, but you can get into these corners, fill that in. I'm going to put this on a colony that's already drawing some combs out and see what happens. And maybe we can get this frame drawn the rest of the way out. That would be interesting. I want to put this in a hive later and I'll let you guys know how it works in a video short. Anyways, beeswax crayon. Try it out. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions on how we did it, leave them below.